Hello everybody, this is Jeff, the Hawaiian Volcanic. Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. So uh, today's project, uh, we're gonna be installing a powered subwoofer um, into my Chevy Silverado. And now this is a store-bought and you know, I decided, you know, well, I'm gonna, uh, I wanna have a little bit more bottom end in, in, in my, uh, my stereo system. And um, the sound system is really not that bad in the uh, Chevy Silverado. Most of the bass comes uh, through the front because you know, it's got the large speakers on the, you know, the front and passenger side driver door. But um, I was looking for, you know, a little bit more punch and more rounded sound. So uh, I did some shopping online and um, you know, did some comparisons and, and what I was trying to keep in mind was, you know, um, something that's, that's gonna be able to fit underneath the, uh, the uh, back seat, um, underneath the, uh, the rear seat, um, and doesn't take up too much space and gives you a pretty decent sound. So um, let's go take a look and see what I purchased and then kind of go over what comes with it and start brocanicking. This is what we're going to be installing in my Chevy Silverado. This is the uh, Kicker um, PT250. This is a 10-inch uh, subwoofer with a built-in amplifier in there. It's got a 100-watt amplifier. And um, I purchased this um, from Walmart. Now, uh, for you guys out there, uh, don't be hating. You know, uh, Walmart actually sells some pretty decent stuff. You know, for your norm normal do-it-yourself or brocanic, you know, kind of um, backyard guy, you know, setups. But um, if you're looking for, you know, some pro audio stuff with some amazing bass that rattles your windows off and people can hear you coming down the block, this isn't for you. So um, if you're looking for, for something that's loud and obnoxious, you might as well just stop the video and go search for something else. <laughs> um, but for, for those of us that are looking for something just to add to our current sound system, maybe a little bit of low end, you know, I decided to go with this, uh, with this setup here, the Kicker PT250. So I'm going to go and open up the box and um, see what's inside and then talk about, um, you know, um, the basics, maybe uh, some of the quality and all that stuff. And then um, we'll move on to getting it installed. Okay, so uh, right out of the box, brand new. Now this is a really, uh, this is a really compact subwoofer. Comes with a uh, basic installation guide. Comes with your adapters. Comes with straps. If you're going to put this in a uh, single cab pickup truck, just to kind of um, tether it down from moving around. Um, the speaker like so what this looks like. Like the uh, black and the gray, gray on the main parts and the black accents on the side. Your amplifier is built in and is a 100 watt uh, amplifier. And um, I'll zoom in here just a bit and talk about, you know, what the uh, amplifier, you know, um, with the uh, settings, what you can do to change the settings to get the sound that you want. You can, you can kind of tune it to your to the space, the cab space. So um, let's take a look at that. Okay, so this is your panel. That's on the uh, subwoofer box. So this is uh, your 100 watt amplifier. And 
you've got some controls here. You've got uh, auto turn on, input level, phase, um, gain, crossover, base boost, remote access, or remote base rather, and then um, got a fuse in your uh, input for your harness. Um, this comes with a harness, and which allows you, you know, to just kind of disconnect it if you need to remove the box um, for any reason, um, you know, to create space, or if you want to move the box to a different vehicle. So um, let's just go over really quick the functions of each of these. So um, this box or this amplifier gives you two options on how you want to turn on the amplifier. The most common one is using the blue wire, the remote wire, right? So if you're going to do that connection to turn on the amplifier, what you need to do is you need to turn it on to 12 volt and low. So your RCA jacks um, usually have a low signal, which provides a cleaner signal. Now, if you're if you're not going to use your RCA jacks for low input, you can use your high input. And what high input means is you're tapping into um, existing speaker wires. So you've got back um, back doors. Um, back uh, yeah back uh, rear door speakers and you want to tap into those lines then that's what you you would use um, this for these uh, functions here you'd switch it over to DC and switch it to high for the high input in other words if you're tapping into you know speaker wires to feed uh, signal through here then you you'd switch it to this setup right here which is DC and high and how it turns it on is that it senses it senses um, a signal coming through and it will turn to amp on you also have your uh, phase button here to 180 degrees. Now, if for some strange reason, you're getting that really hollow, hollow sound, and it sounds really off, you can um, play with this, and, and um, you, know, you can flick that switch to see if you, you have increased bass or increased volume. Sometimes, for some strange reason in these setups, uh, sometimes these speakers can go out of phase. So, I mean, this is just an option for you in case you do experience something like that. Um, and usually that happens because um, speakers were were phased wrong, you know, in, in the series there. So it could be the front speakers, the rear speakers were, were phased uh, were phased wrong, causing that you know that really tinny sound. Um, next, you've got your gain, crossover, and bass boost. So you can adjust the gain, the the, the volume of this subwoofer box, and kind of um, self-explanatory, but you want to get the most out of your, your amplifier and your, your subwoofer. So typically, just a suggestion, you know, crank your, your, uh, your, your volume on your head unit to about halfway, if, it's, if, it's, if possible, right? Um, and then what you do is you adjust your gain accordingly. Um, and when you do that, you, right when you get to the threshold to where it starts bogging, you kind of back off a little bit. You know, when you want to clean um sound nice punchy sound but not muddy and like you know boggy sounding right um you can also play with the crossover uh, frequency it goes from 50 to um 120 hertz so when the lower you go the more bass you feel the which is that low booming rumble and the higher you go it's more of the punch so more of like a mid mid bass sound nothing wrong with that i mean when you punch it you also can feel it but then for those of you that like you know really booming bass um you guys will probably end up dropping this down to 50 or in around that that area but just keep in mind that when you go lower in frequency you lose volume you'll feel it but at the same time you'll be again um you'll have a loss in volume and you probably put a lot of stress on on the woofer because of that vibration um and here we have a uh, bass boost um, dial here, and how that works is that if you are going to back off on your EQ um, on your head unit, say for instance that you know it sounds there's too much bass and you want to adjust the uh, the uh, EQ on that, but then um, this here sounds is also sounding mid rangey You need a little bit more bass. You can actually boost that bass um, on the subwoofer to kind of even out the sound. You got your remote access input here. And this comes with a, uh, a remote bass control dial. And in the uh, installation guide here, kind of looks like this. And I haven't unboxed this yet, but it's a really small dial with a small knob. And this is what it is right here. And what that does is it, it enables you on the fly to adjust the bass level um, to back off or add more. Um, 
if one of the songs that you're playing has way too much bass and it's starting to bog, you can hear it like bogging really bad. You back off on that so you don't ruin your speaker. So um, this is what the, uh, the amplifier looks like, the amplifier panel that's built in. Now we're gonna open up the accessory bag here and take a look and see uh, what's in the bag. I went ahead and uh, opened up the accessory bag and this is what comes uh, with the kit. So it comes with your wiring harness and it, they give you a good amount of wire here to be able you know, to, to get to your uh, head unit uh, for uh, powering um, and getting a signal to the amplifier. So I um, just think it's really neat. Um, again, blue for the remote wire, which is uh, what I'm gonna be, um, what I'm probably gonna be tapping into. And you've got positive, negative, and this has, actually has two speaker um, inputs. So how that works is that you're gonna need an RCA jack which I purchased. This is about 20 feet um, to go from the uh, output of my head unit. And I have a uh, another piece here that I that I had lying around that actually is a uh, female uh, part of the RCA jack that actually has open ends um, to where I can um, solder them onto these connections. So um, you'll see that a little later in the, uh, the video. This is your... Um, base level control right here um, so I was talking about earlier this allows you to adjust the bass um, on the fly so if you've got a song that's that doesn't have too much bass and you all of a sudden you, you, you get one that's got boom and bass you can back off on this manually or you can add on the fly uh, to save your speaker so you don't blow them out and then the uh, the cord here um, eighth inch jack cord is, is about 20 feet so it gives you a lot of um, you know um, length to be able to attach it to wherever you need to um, on your dash or underneath the, um, the dash or whatever you, you want to do. And also comes with a, a fuse holder. This already comes with the fuse that's already in there. This is a, a, a 15 amp fuse. Um, so we'll just go with that. And in my previous videos, when I did my head unit install, when I did the um, train horn install and the rock light install, each of them have their own fuse holder. And reason being is because you want the fuse to blow before you blow the, um, you blow the uh, accessory. And uh, closer it is to the battery, um, it's the better it is. Um, if you don't have an inline fuse, um, chances are you, know, you might start a fire, um, burn up your vehicle. You don't want that. You want the fuse to blow up before your car does. So um, highly recommended that if you if you are installing you know high powered amp, make sure you've got a fuse holder, um, and make sure it's got the right um, you know amps, um, the right the correct fuse on there. Um, and finally, um, it comes with these uh, mounting straps. So if, if you guys have pickup trucks, single bed, um, you could um, actually fasten these um, directly to your cab. Use the straps, these have Velcro on them so you can kind of um, lock them down, keep them from vibrating and moving around while you're driving. So um, that's all that comes in the kit. Um, I think we're ready to rock and roll here. Let's start mechanicing. Thank you. 
Okay, so this is what we got we got done so far. So just kind of routed the wires underneath the uh, carpet there. And I got it coming out right here. And um, I popped this open and I, I ran the wires um, right along the side here of the cab. And now this is the positive lead. I've got to decide if I'm gonna drill a hole down here somewhere, which I'm kind of thinking uh, there's, there's, uh, there's really no harnesses that are come through on this side, at least that I've seen. Um, they kind of run along more sort of center, but I want to get as close as I can to the batteries. And you guys seen me uh, take apart the uh, console there, and um, what I did was uh, the RCHX for this specific head unit, this uh, Boss 850 ACP or 800, um, it has left and right subwoofer outputs, which means I can control the subwoofer volume from the head unit. So if your head unit has that, um, um, that feature, then you're stoked. So that makes it a lot easier for me when it comes for, uh, uh, to, to do controls and all that fun stuff. So anyway. Okay, so now we're at the part where um, I'll be doing some splices and some connecting. Now, usually I'd go and solder these wires together, but you know, um, I decided to do the, uh, the quick and easy, take the quick and easy route, just use butt connectors. Um, I got enough space here to where I can make sure that these wires are hidden back there nice and loosely underneath the, uh, the carpet there so there's no snagging and, and any danger of that, uh, danger of these um, wires um, coming apart. So the piece that I was talking about, being that this is an RCA jack, um, RCA um, um, outputs, right? Uh, output uh, from the uh, head unit going into the subwoofer amp. The uh, harness doesn't have a um, subwoofer um, input that's an RCA jack. So this piece here, actually, I had lying around. And this actually came from uh, an earlier project that I did um, a while back, um, installing a Rockford Fosgate stereo system in a Harley-Davidson Street Glide. And these are extra parts, and these are those connectors I was telling you about that are female that have um, just uh, wired ends rather than, you know, um, RCA male or female jacks at the end. So this is going to make my installation pretty easy where I don't have to like, you know, cut into this RCA and then hope that, you know, I got the wires all nice and neat. You got to kind of twist them around so, um, you know, you can get enough wire uh, to connect or solder so um you can actually buy something like this you know off of amazon and i'll have a link in the uh description below but just so happened i have like about a half dozen of these because I've, I've installed um about four of those rockford fosgate um speaker systems into harley davidson's in the in the past so um again sometimes it's good to keep some stuff around and um and i lucked out now on this project so um gonna continue on and uh, get these things all set up then uh, try to route the uh, positive um, lead onto the battery and hopefully we can get this thing sound checked. Let's keep working. So moving along uh, to this side, this is the uh, base control right there, that base level control 
knob. And what I did was, um, it just takes two screws right here. And to make it clean, there's these uh, little uh, fasteners that you can buy. And all they really, all they really are is just a tube um, that has a flange at the end. And uh, I drilled a, uh, like a 5 8 hole and then popped it in there. So from a distance, it looks pretty clean. I didn't, I didn't want to have to run the wire going all the way down this way. Kind of like how this is right here, it's kind of cheese ball, but I mean, that's um, that's how that has to be set up for the uh, for my trailer uh, brake control there. So anyway, so we've got this part done and then this wire here will run along the panels here along the side and will probably pop out. Um, in the same area right here where I have these wires come out. So um, we're gonna move right along and um, get the connections going. And then um, we'll go and get the uh, positive plugged in and hopefully uh, give, uh, give her a test ride. Okay, so there it is. Everything installed. We got the, uh, the harness all cleaned up. Use some wire loom to hide the wires. And what I did was I um, ran the wiring um, just right behind this area right here, underneath the, uh, the floor. And um, then run along these boards here, all the way through to the front. Um, now, the only thing that uh, I had an issue with was the uh, remote wire. So the uh, remote wire didn't have enough power to turn on the subwoofer so what I did was I tapped into the uh, lighter back here and remote uh, the remote wire is usually positive so I just I just ran a wire at, uh, but underneath the carpet here and just and just tap right into the uh, the uh, uh, positive wire in the lighter right here and it turns on just fine and the purpose of the remote wire is to um, to turn on the amplifier so when you, you fire up your uh, when you turn your ignition it goes on the accessory um, the, uh, the power uh, turns on, um, goes through and turns on the, uh, the amplifier. So that's what it looks like. All right, so uh, it's the day after and I had a chance to uh, test out the, uh, the subs uh, uh, while I was on my way to work and back. And you know, I was very, very surprised for a small little box like that. You know, it actually put out some, um, some bass you can, you can hear, some low end that you can feel. Um, what's really neat about this is, um, you know, it's a very compact box and it was just absolutely shocking, you know, the kind of, um, the kind of sound you get out of it, you know, in such a small little package like this. So let's go ahead and, uh, and test her out. Okay. So, um, what I'm going to be doing is playing two tracks. The first track is just going to be bass drum and a little bit instrumental in the background. Um, and the second track is going to be more of the bassy boomy sound. So. Um, let's get to it. So well, what I'm going to do is uh, play the track um, without the subwoofer and then with the subwoofer. And hopefully you can discern the difference between having the subwoofer off and um, on. So um, let's just jump right into it. So this is without the subwoofer, it's subwoofer at the lowest level. So I've got this at uh, level 15 on the, on the head unit. This is with the uh, the base up. Again, this is without the base or without the subwoofer. This is with the subwoofer. Now we're going to, we're going to go down and do the uh, second track. This one's more more of uh, the uh, boomy bassy sound. So again, we're going to do it without the uh, without the uh, bass on or the subwoofer on. So here we go. Uh, it actually sounds pretty good um, without the subs on. I mean, my my sound system sounded all right, but with the subwoofer, for sure, big difference. 
Antarctica. So this is with the uh, subwoofer. I'm filling it up now. Okay, without. And with. All right. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you'll be able to tell that, uh, tell the differences and probably better with headphones in. So anyway, let's, uh, let's do a debrief and wrap this up. All right, gang. Well, there you have it. Um, another project done. And this was, uh, for the, uh, kicker, uh, PT 250, uh, enclosed subwoofer box. And, um, if you want my honest opinion about it, I mean, it sounds actually pretty good uh, for such a small package. Um, if you're looking for just some obnox uh, obnoxious bass, you know, um, and you want to wake up the entire neighborhood, have someone hear you down the road a mile away or, you know, annoy neighbors, um, th this is not the speaker for you. And in, in fact, it's not even capable of doing that. But I can tell you that in the cab, whether you're in your car or in your, your pickup, I mean, it really does sound good. And what's really neat about it too is that that bass is just for that, uh, for that space, you know, in your cabin. I mean, I, I mean, it it sounds really good inside my Silverado. Um, you can feel it, you can hear it. I mean, it absolutely just fills up the cabin, you know, with with a uh, much fuller sound, uh, lower end, um, you know, the thump. You can feel it. You step outside of the car, I mean, you can barely make it out, you know. So, um, if you're looking to add a little bit of bass, you know, um, low end um, in your uh, sound system. This is definitely a great buy, and it's still relevant today. This um, uh, speaker, powered speaker box, has been around for a number of years now, and I mean, uh, Kicker is still um, producing these because of you know the popularity and just the ease of installation and just the amazing sound. So that's my two cents. Now, I'm not being sponsored by any of these guys, um, you know, Kicker or or Walmart or anything like that. But um, I will leave a description in the. Uh, in the comments below for you know um, where you can get these I mean, you can get them anywhere pretty much um you know walmart and on amazon but i'll leave a link anyway and um a link on some of the items that i use in this installation so um guys as always thank you so much for checking out the channel really appreciate you guys um coming back for a visit um i'll have a you know a few more um projects coming up and reviews so um stay tuned for that if you do like the content and you're new to the channel, please like and subscribe. Um, you know, just trying to get to, trying to break the 500 mark. I am a new YouTube channel. Um, you know, just I don't think I've made a year yet. You know, um, but you know, I'm hoping to get uh, more subscribers. Uh, you know, so I can make more content. And you know, I'd love to hear from you guys. So go ahead and leave a comment in the comment section. So uh, this is your Hawaiian Brocanic. See you in the next one. Aloha.